Inasmuch as I have only a few more hours to live, and because my execution is attracting so much attention, I wish to make a public statement. First, I do not protest against being punished. I was found guilty of a serious crime. But early in youth, I was denied parental care, affection, and guidance. Religious training would have pointed me in the right direction, but I was not taken to Sunday school or to church services. I have tried so hard to let people know that I didn't feel good inside, but no one seemed to understand. Would whoever reads this please do all they can to start something to stimulate the public to thinking about people, people with problems like mine. This is Sister Louise Allen, Sunday school teacher. Like thousands of others all over the church this morning, she's putting the final touches to her lesson before going to Sunday school over at the 12th Ward. Come on, Robbie. Hi. today? I don't know. As you mark your role, Sister Allen, have you ever asked yourself why these seats are empty? Where are those youngsters? And what's the reason for their absence from class week after week? Some of them are not very far away. In fact, just outside your window in the church parking lot. Others are late, or haven't made it at all for various reasons. Oh, Dorothy, it's a quarter of 10. Are you getting ready for Sunday school? Dorothy, did you hear me? What? Are you getting ready for Sunday school? It's getting late. Gee, Mom, do I have to go? Well, of course you do, dear. Now hurry up and get dressed. Are you going? Well, no, dear. I have dinner to get with Grandmother coming. But you go along anyway. Well, what about Dad? Well, he's going to work on his boat. You'll just have to represent the family in Sunday school this morning. Now here's a happy scene. A good father and son relationship exists in this home, it seems. There's not a thing wrong with it, except that this happens to be Sunday morning, and they are all members of record in the ward. This father was once asked if he would attend the class for senior members of the Aaronic Priesthood held at the chapel each Sunday morning. No, sir, I figure Sunday belongs to my family. My boys like to hike and camp and ski, and so do I. We've had a lot of good times together. I don't figure a fellow has to go to church to be religious. I try to live the golden rule, and I teach my boys to do the same thing. But I can't see this going to church every Sunday. Then there's the boy whose parents don't care very much what he does with his time. Sunday to him is just another day of relaxation from school. Often his friendships develop in an undesirable environment and he joins in many escapades and absorbs habits which are harmful to him. 80 riders were employed, 40 going west and 40 going east at the same time.
I'm just not getting through to my class, and I don't know why. I can't seem to hold their interest. Perhaps I'm not doing a good job with the lesson. I, I don't prepare properly. Oh, Heavenly Father, I do so want to help those young people. Please help me to find a way. Over 70 years have passed since I sat as a primary boy in the class of Sister Moselle Hall, one of my teachers. I remember standing with other boys by the side of her horse just before primary opened and noting how high the watermark came on the side of the saddle. She had crossed the South Fork River at high water tide in the springtime in order to keep her appointment with her class that afternoon. And in our childish minds, we pictured her as having risked her life to come from the old co-op farm to teach us. Strong as was our respect for her heroism, I think it was her vital interest in the personal lives of each one of us that really won our love and confidence. Her lessons were always vividly interesting, and she taught the eternal principles with faith and simplicity. There was no question of discipline in her class, and whatever she said as she taught us was accepted as gospel truth. Many, if not all, of the particular lessons she taught are forgotten, but her ideals of honesty, respect, obedience, dependability, and reverence were guiding influences through childhood and youth. Such can be the inestimable influence of a teacher upon a child whose confidence she has gained. This challenging example awakened Sister Allen to new possibilities in her teaching assignment. For the first time, she saw her students as future leaders of the church, of industry, and even of the nation. Most of the machinery she needed was close at hand, only requiring her active interest to set it in motion. One of the first things was to check with the Sunday school secretary for the names and addresses of all who should be in her class each Sunday morning. As she studied the names now entered in her roll book, she tried to visualize each person, remembering the things she knew about them, their appearance, their scholarship, parents and homes. She looked beyond the cold percentages and saw warm hearts with great potential and souls precious in the eyes of the Lord. She discovered that she didn't even know some of them, couldn't remember ever having seen them in church. These would require special attention. She set out to learn about their habits and their hobbies, their hopes and their fears. It was going to be her special calling and pleasure to find each and every one and make friends and confidence of them. If Sister Allen had had to face this new concept of a teacher alone, it might have overwhelmed her, but she had help. Help in the person of her stake board advisor and in the stake preparation, ward, faculty and prayer meetings, which she conscientiously attended. 
She appointed some of her regular students as class officers, giving them the important job of helping her make and assign visits to those not attending regularly. She made a point of becoming personally acquainted with the parents of her students. And last but not least, she read everything possible that might tend to improve her performance as a teacher. Of the many experiences Sister Allen had with her enlistment work, perhaps none was more far-reaching than her contact with a boy named Raymond Grant. According to the records, he lived on 6th Avenue. for Raymond Grant. Could that be you? Yeah. Oh, fine. I'm Sister Allen. I'm one of the Sunday school teachers over at the ward. You belong to a group for whom I'm having a party, and I would like to invite you to come along. I don't go to Sunday school. Well, that's all right, Ray. You'll be very welcome anyhow. Those who'll be there are your neighbors and your school friends, and you'll be right at home there. I don't go to parties either. Oh, this'll be fun, Ray. I wish you'd come. You belong there with us. Well, Ray, we want you to know you'll be more than welcome. If you should change your mind, here's the address with the time and place. It's next Saturday. Come as you are, Ray, and have fun with us. OK. Well, goodbye, Ray. It's been nice meeting you. Hi there, Ray. Your thumb seems to be working well tonight. Can I give you a lift downtown? Yeah, thanks. I'm sorry you couldn't make it to the party the other night, Ray. We missed you. I was out with a friend. We didn't get back till late. Do, do you have any brothers or sisters, Ray? I can't remember having met them. Yeah, two sisters. They're both married. Do they live here? No, one's in California. The other's back east. Do you like music, Ray? Didn't I hear you playing the harmonica the other day when I called? Oh, I just picked it up from one of those advertisements. Didn't cost much and sort of company when you're. Oh, I, I get a kick out of it. Where do you want me to let you off? Ray. Anywhere will do. I'm just going to a movie. Center Street will be fine. Glad I came along at the right time. It was nice seeing you again, Ray. Yeah, yeah, thanks a lot. Oh, uh, just a minute. Brother Boswell, I'll see you later. I've been trying to get acquainted with the little Grant boy. You go hard teaching at his home up on 6th Avenue, don't you? What's the score there? Let's see, the Grants? Oh, yes, he's a widower. They're seldom home when we call. I think he works nights. Well, what about the boy? Who looks after things there? Well, I just don't know. I think he fends pretty much for himself. 
He's a moody little guy. Doesn't respond to the priesthood program. I know they've tried, but he doesn't mix too well with the other boys. Why, what's your interest? Oh, I'm his Sunday school teacher. Or I should say I would be if I could get him to come. Well, lots of luck to you, Sister Allen. We'll try to put in a good word for you the next time we find them home. Well, thanks very much, Brother Boswell. Goodbye. In their regular get-togethers, designed to stimulate enlistment work, Sister Allen and the class officers went carefully over the names of newcomers to the ward and those still not attending Sunday school regularly. Do you have the roll book, Karen? Yes, I do. It's right here. Good. How many visits were made altogether last week? Let's see. There was one, two, three, Sister Allen. They were made by Tony, Barbara, and Barbara again. She made two. Oh, yes. I remember your report in class last week now. Let's see, Barbara, you got a promise for next Sunday from June Priestley, didn't you? Mm-hmm. But Marge Gooding wasn't home. That's right. I think we'd better step up our visits and call back the second time if we don't catch them at first. What about your call to your friend George, Tony? You got a rather surprising reaction from his parents, didn't you? Yeah, it was funny. I was in the living room talking to George and wasn't getting very far with him when his old man, I mean, Brother King came in and asked him why he didn't accept our invitation. And I, he came right back with, well, I'll go if you'll go, Dad. And sort of put Brother King on the spot. And he mumbled and stalled around for a second. And he said, well, I just might take you up on that. And so if George is ready next Sunday when I call for him, I'll be mighty interested to see if his dad comes too. Much of the enlistment visiting was done by the students under the direction of Sister Allen. But whenever the efforts of the young people failed to bring about the desired result, Sister Allen made it her personal responsibility to follow up. Ray Grant's name came up every time, and it seemed that her only chance of interesting Ray would be through another direct approach. We've been visiting young people in Ray's age group, and I was hoping I'd get a chance to talk to him. Yes, it is too bad that Ray isn't home today. In fact, I don't know where he is right now. Mainly, I'd like to know what he does on Sundays. I don't know what the boy does on Sundays. Uh, ever since his mother died, he's more or less taken care of himself. Well, I suppose I should be closer to him than I am, but, well, I work nights and sleep during the day. It makes it a bit difficult. Do you have any objections to his coming to our Sunday school classes? Oh, heavens no. If you can get him to go, it's all right with me. At least it'd keep him off the streets. we're traveling in the same direction once more. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? May I help you? Oh, let's see. I'll have a glass of orange, please. Okay. Say, I wonder if you'd do something for me, Ray. I have a couple of boxes of books I'd like moved into the garage, and they're just too much for me. I meant to have my husband help me before he left. He's in the service in Alaska, you know. But you look good in Husky. I think between the two of us, we should be able to manage it. Do you think you could spare a minute to help me sometime? I guess so. Yeah, I'll help you. Careful of that sawhorse there, Ray. That's good. Let's put them over on that box in the corner. Careful of these. Oh! Oh, there. Oh, that was heavy. Um, Let's put this box right up here and throw these in the incinerator. And um, take this one and we well, might as well put that right here. This doesn't have to be here. Oh. Now, uh, those three books on top, Ray, let me have those. We'll put them in here. They're keepsakes. 
want them to get dirty. Isn't that pretty? My mother made that for me. My, my mother had one like it, too. Well, that's a good job well done. What do you say to a piece of apple pie for wages? Sounds okay to me. Good. Come on. You sit yourself down and I'll have it for you right away. Excuse me, just a minute. I hear that? Okay. Did you hit your hand when that box snipped? Oh, it'll be all right. How does that look? Gee, that's swell. Do you like apple pie? Yes. Well, we can just get it out in one piece. I'll get you some milk, just a minute. Moving those books really helped me, right? your mother pass away? I mean, was it long ago or just recently? Seems a long time ago now, but I guess it was only about four years ago. I was in the fifth grade. What was she like? Was she a blonde like you? Sort of. We all took pretty much after her, I guess. She played the piano real fine. How do you manage now without her? Oh, we get along. I do a lot of the cooking since my sister's left, but it's not the same. I guess no one can take the place of a mom. Just a natural step from this experience in her kitchen to the classroom. A bridge of understanding had been formed between Ray and Sister Allen, and attendance at her class had now become Ray's own desire rather than someone's command. The members of the class went out of their way to make Ray feel welcome, for although Sister Allen had brought him back to Sunday school, the esteem of his classmates would be an important factor in keeping him coming. His scholarship in the gospel was naturally weak, but he received much help from those around him, and the incentive to succeed was very strong. His first real test came some months later. Ray, our class has been asked to give the two-and-a-half-minute talks for two weeks from this Sunday. And I think if you studied up on the lesson or some other material, you'd be able to give one just fine. Oh, I, I just can't, Sister Allen. I wouldn't know what to say. Oh, I wouldn't ever be able to get up there and talk. Why, Ray, it's not much different from getting out in front of the class, and you've done that many times now. Gee, all those people looking at me, I'd be scared to death. You'd make it all right, Ray. I've even heard some of the general authorities say that they're frightened when they speak. But they've never fainted, and you won't either. Oh, you make it sound so easy, but I know I just freeze up. 
No, I can't do it. One of the greatest missionaries of all time was Paul the Apostle. He had not always been a Christian. In fact, in fact, he tried his best to destroy the work which Jesus had started. Yet, even with such a poor beginning, this man who, this man who started out to destroy the Christians became one of its greatest teachers. Paul's example is a good one for all of us to follow because ours is a missionary church. Just like Paul nearly 2,000 years ago, our missionaries are go, go, taking the gospel out into the world to teach our brothers and sisters in other lands about Jesus. I hope that someday I will know enough about the gospel to teach it to others. And I pray that my Heavenly Father will, will grant me power and wisdom, that I may teach those principles of the gospel that have come to mean so much to me. I know I'm going to miss all of you the next two and a half years. After all, Germany is a long ways off. But I know that, that I will have your faith and prayers with me, and that these will be my greatest assets in time of discouragement. I would like to thank all who have taken part on my program this evening. And I would like to thank especially my father. He is making it possible for me to go on this mission. It's times like this that that I wish my mother were here. I know that this would be a great moment in her life. I'd like to, like to thank all my classmates and teachers for all that they have done for me. I don't think they realize how much. But there is one person that I'd, I'd like to pay special recognition to this evening, and that is Sister Allen. I don't know how many of you know it, but Sister Allen has been a great source of inspiration to, to many young people in this ward. Her efforts to find me in the first place, and then her patience in, in showing me the good things of life, the essentials for a happy life, well, they're, they're beyond my power of expression. I'd like to, to thank her first for her unfailing love, and secondly, for the principles of the gospel which she taught me. These principles have brought me greater happiness than I have ever known before. And I hope and pray that I may be able to carry these same teachings to others, that they too may know the same joy that has come into my life. Such can be the inestimable influence of a teacher upon a child whose confidence she has gained. 